If you were served with a domestic violence restraining order and you are trying to figure out how to represent yourself, then this video is for you because I'm going to be teaching you how to use the hearsay objection to win your restraining order hearing. My name is Veronica. I am a domestic violence restraining order hearing defense attorney here in California and I help people put their cases behind them so that they can enjoy their lives and their freedom. And again, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use one objection here say to win your restraining order hearing. What you're about to see is actually an excerpt from a course that I teach called Defeat the DVRO in which I teach you everything that you need to know in order to win your restraining order hearing. You can get your first free class in that down below. Let's jump right in. So first let's talk about what an objection is. So technically it's a formal protest made by one party, it could be the petitioner or the respondent, against a question a statement by a witness, or a piece of evidence that is presented by the other party. And the purpose of the objection is technically to draw the judge's attention to contest the relevance, admissibility, or appropriateness of the question material. But really, what we're trying to do here is keep evidence out. Keep any evidence that we possibly can that is not good for you, we want to keep that out. And actually, before I get into what's the procedure for using these objections, I will just explain to you how these can really screw the other side over when they don't know what they're doing. For example, the petitioner is trying to testify. She's in the middle of her testimony. You say, objection hearsay, and the judge sustains it. She probably does not know what the heck that means or what to do in the future. She tries again, same thing, objection, hearsay, sustained. She tries to play a video, objection, foundation, and sustained. She will not be able to get anything in. And what happens is that people end up getting really, really flustered and they don't know what you're talking about when you say foundation or hearsay or any of these things, they really don't understand and so because of that, they sort of, in my experience, give up sometimes. This is the procedure for using these objections. Pay close attention to the other party's questions, statements, or evidence. Identify whether one of the objections that I'm giving you fits. If you identify something that the other party says or is trying to present as problematic, say objection loudly and clearly as soon as you notice. So you're going to probably have to interrupt the petitioner to do this. She's going to be talking and you're going to have to say objection. That's okay. That is actually the one exception or well, the main exception where it's okay to interrupt her. If you fail to do so and she gets all the evidence in or she plays a video or whatever and then you object, the judge may deem your objection untimely. So it's very important that you do that right away. Don't be scared to do it, it's normal. If the judge has been, especially if the judge hasn't seen that many respondents who know any of this stuff before, and a lot don't. I mean, that's why I made this course in the first place. If anything, the judge will be impressed. So just go ahead and do it, say objection, wait for the petitioner to stop speaking, and then briefly explain why you object. This is usually a one word. So you'd say objection, hearsay, that's it. You're then going to wait for the judge. The other party may try to keep going, beginner's mistake, because the judge will get annoyed. The judge is supposed to think about it and then will say sustained, which means that the judge agrees with you and that evidence cannot come in, the petitioner has to stop and cannot present that evidence, or overruled, which means that they can keep going. Let's talk about hearsay. Hearsay is an out of court statement. So a statement made not right here during the hearing, but another time offered for the truth of the matter asserted. If, for example, there is a medical record and the medical record said, well, petitioner came in with a broken arm. That is hearsay because that is a statement made out of court by whoever's creating this medical record if it's offered to prove that the arm was broken. A big red flag is someone told me that. That's something that the petitioner will often say. So respondent's brother-in-law told me that respondent has been coming around my house and taking pictures of it and that makes me feel threatened. Or that respondent said that he's going to 
if if I won't be with the respondent, then nobody will, and he's going to mess me up. You know, something like that. If it's if it's somebody else saying it to prove that it happened, that is not allowed in court. Common examples are police reports. If there's a police report, you better object based on hearsay because those are almost never admitted. Even if the officer is there, those are almost never admitted into evidence, and they generally shouldn't be because they're hearsay. Medical records, again, unless you have, and even if you did have the doctor there, many times those are going to count as hearsay. The petitioner quoting anybody but you. If the petitioner says that you said something, that is actually okay. There, that, there are exceptions and exemptions from this hearsay rule. And that's okay. So petitioner quoting anyone but you, though, is not okay. That, that's hearsay and you should object. Petitioner showing evidence of anyone's statements but yours. So you can see why the police reports of medical records might be hearsay because it's somebody else writing, you know, petitioner has a broken arm or I came out to the house and the parties were yelling at each other or whatever it might say. Those are out of court statements and if they're being offered to show that that's true, that that's what happened, then that's hearsay. If petitioner is quoting herself, so a lot of people like to do this. Sometimes it's in text messages, sometimes it's in their testimony, and I told him, stop hitting me. You can't quote yourself in general in court. It's going to be hearsay. You can't show a text message, for example, in general, based on something that you said to prove that whatever statement you made there was true. If petitioner does bring in a witness who makes statements about what petitioner said in general, that's not okay. So if petitioner brings in her sister and the sister said, yeah, we get brunch every Sunday. One Sunday she came in, she had a bruise on her arm. I asked her how she got it and she said that respondent grabbed me by the arm. That is going to be hearsay. The script for this is very simple. It's just objection. Hearsay. You're going to want to prepare as much as you can in advance because you can. If you see statements or testimony that the petitioner made in her request for a DVRO, why not just prepare these things in advance? You're going to have it all ready. You're going to feel more confident. It's going to be an easier overall hearing for you. So you're going to look through if there are any attached exhibits. So sometimes when the petitioner submits her DVRO, her statement, she will also include pages of text messages or whatever else that she may have. She'll actually add it right there. So you can look through and Let's say it's a conversation with her and somebody else, not you, on text message. Well, you're going to identify that there's hearsay there, and you want to prepare to keep that up. You also want to see if there are any exhibits that she mentions. So if she says, well, there's a police report, there's this video, whatever it is, you want to prepare for that and see, okay, do any of these objections apply? Because if they do, or if they maybe do, why not just use them, have them in advance, prepare your script so you feel confident the day up. And then you also want to think of any anticipated other exhibits that you think she might have based on what she's saying happened. Like for example, maybe she tripped and fell one day and she went to the doctor, but she's saying, and, and that wasn't your fault, you had nothing to do with that. But in her DVRO request, she's saying that you pushed her. Maybe you know that she's going to try to bring in those medical reports and you might know then, okay, well that might be hearsay and you might want to make the objection and try to keep it out. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell. And look, if you've come this far, then you obviously really want to win your restraining order hearing. So make sure that you get your free first class with me. It's different material than you just saw via the link down below.